Good morning. Good morning. The last time I went until 11 05, y'all got impatient with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's 11 04. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to see you. I miss the ones I don't see. But um, we're here together to worship, and I've got a couple of announcements. <clears throat> Excuse me. On February 24th, the conference is holding a community action poverty simulation. And they'll be at Birmingham Birch downtown. And um, it's a very interesting um, event to go to. And if you have any specific questions, you can ask Emily. She's on the ministry with the four students who are hosting the event. Um, there's no charge, and um, I would recommend it to you. Also coming up is our um, annual Pinkhead Supper on Fat Tuesday. Um, and I have a little correction for the Ash Wednesday information. Uh, below that, Emily will be at the church 7.30 to 8 a.m. and 6.30 to 7 p.m. She's not going to try to travel backwards in time. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you can't make it to the Ash Wednesday service at noon, then Emily will be here either in the morning or the evening to impose ashes if you wish. And um, now we're going to worship together. <laughs>
um, that our prayers this morning um, are from United Methodist Discipleship Ministries, a great resource for churches, so friends in other churches might be hearing the same prayers we use today. Will you pray with me? God of power and might, you sent prophets to your people, calling us back to your covenant and teaching us your ways. In the fullness of time, you sent your son Jesus, teaching with such authority that our eyes were opened to see your ways in you. Open our hearts and minds that we may understand and proclaim your teachings for all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Scripture lesson this morning is Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever and acted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal grace, the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In our prayers today, um, I want to lift up Mac Jolly, who's uh, not a member, but a friend of our church. Um, Mac has been in the hospital this week um, in ICU, now regular room, um, probably just going through some um, transitions soon at home, so if we can just lift up Mac and others. Um, each time I say, Lord, your mercy, if you would respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and great God, you who love us more than we can imagine, we bring you our joys and thanksgivings, our heartaches and our sorrows. We do continue to bring before you the people in Ukraine and Gaza and in places that are literally being blown apart. Towns, homes, and lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We continue to lift up our community in Alabama and Birmingham, the injustices we allow, the violence that happens, the need for unconditional love, mercy, and redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We lift up Mac and other friends who need your physical healing, and those of us who need other modes of healing in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We give thanks for the rain that fell to water our earth this week and for daffodil stems that are just beginning to poke out of the ground. We give thanks for the grace that has rained upon us this week and for hope in its tiny and tremendous ways that reminds us you are our God and you are acting this very day. In the name of Christ our Lord, hear these earnest words, God, that we now pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
that deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen.
stumble across a quote from a book or a movie or a TV show, whatever, and it will stick with them for some reason. And, and when this happens to many people, then it kind of becomes like a thing in the culture of society. It's one of those quotes that we repeat over and over again. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's because it's true, or it just resonates somehow. Like I can do half of The Princess Bride by memory, because it's just funny to me. But I do not know why the line in George Bernard Shaw's play, Man or Superman, about those who can and those who can, I don't know why that stuck with us. It goes, it reads, those who can do, those who can't teach. And I guess it's funny in context, but most educators, and those of us who love educators, know that teaching on most any level these days is hard. And it takes proficiency. Amen. Yeah, I've got, got some amens. <laughs> you want me to say it again? And certainly those of us who are doers, who do, but couldn't teach our way out of a teacher a paper bag, even we can't even sometimes teach that which we do well. Like you may know how to drive, but have you ever taught someone to drive? Amen. That is not easy, right? So in today's story from Mark, Jesus goes to the synagogue. And also, he wasn't like a local rabbi or, or scribe in Capernaum, but he assumes the, the teaching role there and teaches that day. And what's noticed, what Mark shares with us, is that the people there noticed how he taught with authority. Not like the scribes, not like the rabbis usually do. There was something different, it seems, in the context, in the atmosphere. Now, this particular word used for authority in Greek, exousia, is, is power with justice. So Jesus' words, his confidence, his tone, had an air of justice. Like, he's not just professing something important, but he is conveying something about the word and the world made right. And who doesn't like justice? Well, those who are oppressors. Those who want to keep others in bondage. Those who tip the scales in their own self-satisfying direction. That's who doesn't like justice. And in the synagogue that day, there was a man with some kind of unclean spirit. We might say that this was some kind of evil keeping the man in bondage. Some kind of death-dealing force that had overcome the man. I can imagine that this would be anything from a kind of addictive behavior to an illness to something that is exploiting the man's self or to a spirit that's just sucking the life out of him. So much so that it's not the man that speaks, although the words may have come from his mouth, it's the unclean spirits doing the talking. Sometimes when I'm depressed, I feel like my depression has a voice. And it's telling me that I'm unworthy. I'm, it's, things are bad and they're not going to get better. Just, just give up now, Emily. And that voice overpowers me until I can quiet it. Well, these spirits have overcome the man and are shrieking at Jesus. It seems because of the authority by which he teaches. And then Jesus, who not only teaches about justice, liberation, and healing, he acts with justice for the man, liberates, and heals him. Jesus can, so he teaches. 
He can, so he does. He does what he teaches. This only amazes the crowd more. Maybe they're just used to hearing words that are powerful at one moment and empty in everyday life. I don't know, but they are just amazed as they hear him. He can even do what he teaches, they say, giving orders to unclean spirits. He can free us from that which seems to have an overcoming, death-dealing control of us. So this word that means authority in Greek, exousia, that has a ring of justice to it, is also related to the Greek word ousia, which means being or essence. And it's a word that is used in the Nicene Creed. That's a creed that we don't say very often here, but it's, it was one of the first creeds and one of the defining creeds of Christianity in the ancient church. And the line with the word usia reads, and in one Lord, I believe in, in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the begotten of God the Father, the only begotten, that is of the substance, usia, of the Father. God of God, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made, of the very same nature, usia, of the Father, by whom all things came into being, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So, so that's a little repetitive, but they were kind of fighting for this, that, that God, the, the Father, the Creator, the, the first person of the Trinity, if you will, is the same being essence as Jesus, the Logos, the Word, the Incarnation, the same essence. And this is probably also something that the people that are there that day sense as they listen to Jesus' teaching and action. The authority is coming from who he is thoroughly, down deep inside. He doesn't just teach. He does because he is love that liberates and heals. And when he teaches, he is teaching about who God is, the one who liberates and heals. This is who Jesus is. It is his teaching. It is what he does in us, through us, and for us. And it can be who the church is too, as the body of Christ, if we share his essence, if we claim his authority. Not just play church, not just go through motions, but really imagine, recognize ourselves as those who have been given authority, the power with justice, to liberate and heal those death-dealing forces in our world. Or let's, let's pare that down. The world seems sometimes too overcoming and unruly. What about the evil that's taken hold of the people in our communities? So maybe that's food injustice, for instance. And we are using the authority of God to increase accessibility for some by building support and relationships. There are co-ops and Woodlawn Community Table. Are there further ways that we can be the hands and feet of liberation from hunger and different kinds of hunger, different things that people are starving for? Are there other forces of bondage in our community that we should be speaking to, silencing the shrieks of, so that the oppressed have a voice and can gain freedom from the evil that's 
keeping them captive. For as our community, communion liturgy says, Jesus gave birth to the church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death. So in response to this story, these are some questions for us. How do we recognize Jesus' authority in our own lives? And when we recognize that authority, are there areas of our own bondage that we need to ask for liberation and healing? Are there other places where we feel captive but don't have to be? And then will we act, will we, Woodlawn, United Methodist Church, act as a member of the body of Christ working in God's authority to liberate and heal not only ourselves, but also our neighbors from those death-dealing spirits that overcome us, overwhelm us. Are we those who can or can't? Will we hear the teaching and do? Amen. Our hymn of response, number 389, 383. I'm by Tristan. <coughs> Our teacher and our king. Amen. Amen. 
They covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit and with your authority to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is number 463, Lord Speak to Me. You're invited to stand in body or in spirit as we sing together. church should receive, hear, receive, and, and do. So take thou authority to liberate and to heal the world. And as we go, let us know that God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer walks with us. Amen. Amen. Amen.